We've been seeing higher live and feeder cattle prices lately, but what does that mean for the meat industry going forward? Farm Journal's Tyne Morgan has today's analysis. Joined now by Bob Utterback as well as Mark Gold. Bob, when we look at the livestock complex, saw some momentum with you know uh, cattle, saw some momentum with pork, a lot of question marks when it comes to the supplies on proteins due to disease, due to drought. But as we head into 2022, are you friendly when it comes to hogs and cattle? Yes, because two factors. I don't think we've seen a major expansion. Uh, the second is I don't think the virus or the impact on the domestic economy will be as bad and lockdown won't be as bad. So we'll have, uh, get back to the school systems will be opening up. But the big issue will be the packing industry. Will there be any political action against the packing industry to break the industry up and, and try to pass more of the profit margins from the producer to the, to the consumer? Uh, take some of that profit margin away from the packing. I think that's the big uncertainty for the meat industry looking forward. Uh, but overall, I, I think prices are in uptrend. Uh, I would not want to be selling the board. I think you know, if we break out of these overhead resistance levels, that could be quite bullish uh, for the corn and beans, I mean, corn for cattle and hogs in the near term. It's the same old thing, though. If, if, if Mark's concern about Taiwan and Russia is revealed, trade sanctions would go in place. The market would be in a tizzy. And the downward uh, spikes in the market could be significant. So this is not a time period where you can say, I'm not going to hedge myself because things look good. I would I want to have a catastrophic floor strategy in place. Yeah, Mark, I mean, you know, on the demand side, we have record retail prices. Yet it seems like consumers are not phased by it. I mean, they are hungry for protein. We have other countries hungry for protein. Do you think demand continues to be a supporting factor as we head into the new year? Or do you think there is more risk than upside when it comes to that? Well, I think, I think there's going to be good demand out here for sure. The question becomes, what's going to happen with COVID, with this Omicron variant? The best we can tell now, and we're hopeful of this, that it peaks in the first three or four weeks and then backs off very quickly. So hopefully that won't have too much of an impact on the retail demand for beef. Restaurants will be open. In Chicago, they just passed an ordinance saying that if you're going into a restaurant or a bar, you've got to have proof of vaccination. And I think those kind of moves, whether you like them or not, will certainly help the cattle industry by keeping the restaurants open and moving. So as long as there's no real COVID incident that would quash demand literally overnight, then I think we've got to see some higher cattle prices ultimately looking to buy breaks. But I agree with Bob. There's an awful lot of risk out there. And, you know, spend three, four dollars, a hundred on some kind of put. If keep in mind, if the corn market goes crazy, it's not going to be for feeder cattle. So having some kind of protection in line there also makes a lot of sense to me. Mark and Bob, always great to have you on. Let's take a quick break and then we'll have a check of weather right here on Ag Day. To talk with Bob one on one, call Utterback Marketing Services, toll free at 800 832 1488 for a special report on the grain markets, call toll-free at 877-TT-HEDGE. That's 877-884-3343.